But all right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with our first webinar of the week. So this is our Monday webinar. Um, even though for some of you guys like myself, it's Tuesday right now, right? If you're on like this part of the world where I am, we do, we do webinars Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then if you're on the Western part of the world, it happens to be every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So or webinars regardless of where you are. But first and foremost, guys, we are in some nice, pro or we have closed some nice profits for the week. So we're going to get to the GJ trade. We're going to go over why the stop loss is where it was, why the take profit is where it was, uh, why I decided to enter this trade. Um, this is a trade that both myself and Louie were looking at for this week. So um, if you guys don't know Louie, um, for some of you guys, you might, you might not even have heard of him before because he hasn't been, um, you know, he's not super present with Positive Traders but because he kind of does his own thing, but he's a co-founder of Positive Traders. You guys know Positive Traders has been around for um, almost three years now, and he's like a brother to me. Um, I go out, if you ever see me out in Montreal, that's who I'm seeing. I go out there and he comes over to the West Coast to see me um, quite often, multiple times a year on both sides. And we work very closely together. Um, he does his own thing. I do my own thing. Um, and we get on a call every single Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, right before the uh, weekly outlook for 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we discuss trade setups. We talk about what pairs look good to be trading and we just share information with each other. And the reason I'm telling you guys this is, you know, it, it's good to have a buddy that you can have as a support system. And, 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 making sure that that support system and that buddy is real, you know? And what I mean by real is has the same mindset, you know, like, uh, I'll give you an example. I don't, I don't like call out any names, but there was somebody, um, that I was mentoring one time. Uh, you guys know once in a while I open a one-on-one -on -one mentorships, which I'm, I'm closed for right now. I'm not doing any one-on-one -on -one mentorships. My time is way too busy right now. If I was to do one-on-one -on -one mentorships, it would be it would, it would, it would just be, it wouldn't be, I mean, it would be too much, right? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to expect somebody to pay, um, what I'm asking for. Cause it's just too hard to de dedicate time to just one person all the time. So I'm going to, um, I have a couple people that I'm training one-on-one -on -one right now. And then once that is closed, it's, I, I just don't have time for it guys. I need to focus on, uh, trading. I need to focus on the accounts, the clients, all that good stuff. But regardless of that, uh, just someone that I was training, um, they were saying that their account, their, their trading account was like group funded and everybody can log into the account, right? There's like three different people that had logins to the MetaTrader 4 account. And the, some of the people that were trading it have no like idea of risk management, you know? So like don't, don't have, when, when, you, when I say it's good to have a trading buddy, don't have that kind of trading buddy where they're like, oh yeah, let's just like, you know, go high lot size and not use the position size calculator and over leverage. Like that buddy is just going to be a bad influence to you, but it's good to have a buddy that you can share trade ideas with that you guys can support each other um, and help each other out. So um, that is one thing that me and Louie do. So I think it's important that you guys um, have somebody in your life too, that you can do that because trading it can be quite lonely, right? Not a lot of people understand it. And if you don't have somebody in your life, that's okay. You can be successful without having a support system necessarily. You know, you have me, you have the group, um, but most importantly, you have me. You have somebody that's here supporting you on a daily basis, four days a week, well, five days with the weekly outlook, right? Like five days a week, every year, every day, consistently here to support you and grow. So if you feel like you don't have anybody or you live in like a small town, you don't have somewhere where you can just, I mean, I, I mean, think about where, like Louie and I are thousands of miles away, we still have the support system, right? Social media is crazy powerful. Me and Louie met because of social media. So it's really powerful. You know, they say your vibes attract, attract your tribe. So whatever, you know, vibrations and whatever energy you put out into the world, you're, is going to be reciprocated into your own life. So, you know, get those, get, get that good energy flowing, get those good people in your life and, and you're going to do, you're going to see uh, results. So, uh, before we jump into this GJ trade and look at some other trades that we may potentially take this week, um, I want to do two things. First, I want to look at the economic calendar. And two, we're going to look at the, the MAM account, which is all what all the signals are based off of. First and foremost, though, uh, we saw the pound move like crazy, okay? 
Um, we saw Prime Minister May speak. Now, to be completely honest, guys, um, I was up until about 1 a.m. taking care of some stuff. So this came out at about, at about 10.30 p.m. I still, and I'm just being honest with you guys and transparent, I still have not gotten a chance to see what Prime Minister May said. I did see somebody in the private chat, um, you know, in the students' chat room, say something about them uh, making the vote or, you know, uh, pushing back the vote, which would make sense. I mean, it would make sense why pound dropped, but I need to look at, well, I mean, what else, we'll do it right now. We'll do it right now. How's that? We'll go to forexlive.com. We'll take a look at what happened. Um, let's see. Let's see. Golden Sachs like the Australian dollar higher. We need to find it. Okay. GBP hammered. Forex Live news wrap Monday the 10th. The 10th, the 11th. Okay, I'm just trying to find it, guys. It should be maybe somewhere over here. What we are looking for is pound news. We're looking for GBP information to meet with Chancellor Markel on Tuesday. May we'll head over to Berlin. Okay, we know that. Trade ideas thread. Here's what the economic calendar is. Okay. Hold on. This just gets me so confused. I always have to do this because I'm so, because they don't, they don't have it set to your time. So GMT time is 3 a.m. So it's 11 at 3 a.m. So we're looking at 11, 3. So, okay, that was just a moment ago. 150. So then let's see how many hours ago was this? Okay, this is at 1030. So we're talking, oh, wow. Okay, so it's probably going to be on the, the previous page. This is almost 12 hours ago. So it's going to be at like 3 p.m. so like 13 1300 hours okay yeah we need to go more headlines more headlines okay let's go monday december 10th we need to go all the way back to like 1300 hours they, they post so much on here guys that's why you need to be careful um okay here we go here we go uh, 15 hasn't put a date on how, how long she needs to negotiate. So this is back this guys What I'm doing right now is if you aren't following me if I'm moving too fast for you If you notice right here, it says right here on all of the news articles. It says GMT time Okay, which is green which mean time. Okay now I obviously I don't have every time zone memorized in my head and, and I'm and I travel quite a bit so um, I don't always have it memorized of where I am so I Google search green which mean time I use my resources that's what's key guys it's like you don't always need handouts just use your freaking resources okay so we google GMT time so this means 321 a.m. and you can see on Forex live they do everything by military time right so like 15 32 is 2 p.m. right 2 32 p.m. so we have to go to um, three okay so it is hold on Theresa May Hold on, let's just go back. Go back to Brussels to look for a better deal. Okay, guys, hold on. What we're gonna do, we're gonna change this to GMT time. Okay. So 3.24 a.m., perfect. Now we're going to go to the calendar and we're going to see what time this came out. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, 3.30 p.m. So at 15.30, okay, 15.30 is when it came out. So we need to go. So they were already, you can see there's, there was already news. Brexit, Brexit vote can be delayed without parliament approval. Um, Theresa May hasn't put a date on how long she needs to negotiate the report. Theresa May says vote would have been rejected by significant margin. So you can see that this is already creating like a negative bias. So right here, actually, right here. So if we were looking for 1530 right here. So 1530 because that's 330 p.m. GMT when the news came out. We can click on these. GMT will look for a legal end date for the backstop. You can, re you can re read right here. Let's read it. The political editor of The Sun says Theresa May won't be looking to renegotiate with the EU on the withdrawal agreement. Instead, she will look for legal assurances that the backstop agreement won't last indefinitely. In theory, 
there might be some wiggle room for the EU here, the European Union, because they won't be reopening the deal, just adding to it. In Parliament, Dunn reports that she will say that the vote will be delayed indefinitely until she gets that. Um, that could win her the support of a few holdouts and is a bit of good news for GBP. I mean, at least she has a plan. So that's one, this, that's this guy right here. So you remember, it says right here, report from Tom Dunn. So he says right here is a bit of good news for GBP, but in, in realistic terms, guys, she says that a vote will be delayed. I mean, that only means from a fundamental standpoint that things are going to be delayed even more. You know, we've, it was, when Brexit happened, uh, not last year, but the, I believe it was the year before last, guys. Time flies by so fast, so I'm pretty sure it was 2016. Let's just double check. GBP, yeah, 2016, when Brexit happened. You know, everybody thought it was going to be this quick and easy, oh, it's a done deal, you know, it's, it's done here and there. No, guys. And we knew this. Like, I mean, people that were studying the markets and, like, actually understood the fun. I mean, I just remember social media. Everybody was like, oh. Brexit is done. You know, we can get back to guys. Brexit is not going to be done for years and years. Okay. It's a very big deal when a country leaves, uh, you know, that, that central bank or like when the pound leaves the European union, the European union is the largest central bank in the entire world, right? The European union controls over 30 different countries, way larger than the federal reserve. The federal reserve with the U S dollar, even though we put so much emphasis on the U S dollar, the federal reserve, only handles one country, which is the United States. Okay. The European Union handles 30 different countries. So when one of those countries decides to leave, that's still a pretty big deal. Okay. So, um, you know, don't think that Brexit is over anytime soon, guys. So like the market goes a lot, the fundamentals go a lot deeper than just, oh, the news came out bad for Brexit. You know, the new, it, you know, pound is leaving short pound, right? Because that's not true, right? We can see, look what happened like on a larger, larger scaled out perspective on the weekly, right? This is Brexit right here, guys. All right, this is Brexit uh, in 2016. And then look what happened. Price moved all the way back to, to pre-Brexit prices, right? It's not just as simple as, oh yeah, just short, short Brexit and expect this, this long term and the pound to just crash. No, there's gonna be news and things that move it. Um, overall, I think we're looking for downside on pound yen though, but it doesn't have a ton to do with Brexit, a little bit of fundamentals, but mostly the technicals, which we're going to look at in just a moment. Okay. So, uh, hold on. Let's see. We have a bunch of people in the chat. Same here. Teamwork makes a dreamer. 15 is three. Yeah. Okay. 15 is three. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you guys. <laughs> I just, my brain races so fast. I just I thought it was maybe two for a second, but realized it's three. So glad we are all on the same page. Okay. So let's look at pound yen. Okay. So it starts off for this trade in particular, it starts off actually on the monthly time frame, guys. Okay. And if you guys have been paying attention, I've mentioned this a couple times with pound yen. And good job for those of you guys that have been paying attention, right? It's not always like negativity from me, guys. I, and I don't want you guys to think that I'm just like this negative person and putting you guys down all the time or putting putting traders down. I'm just real with you guys, okay? I'm just real because I know the 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 real percentage at the end of the day. I know that only a small percentage, or I hope I hope most of you guys that are in here, but I mean like let's take the positive traders chat for example, right? The 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 big one, the main chat with almost 1500 people in it. I know that maybe 5% of those people. So what are we looking at? Like 50 people in there, 60 people, 70 people in there are probably actually doing the things that need to be done, right? Actually keeping a trading journal, actually using consistent good risk management, actually, you know, having a logical reason behind entering their, their trades. The other 1,400 people that are in the group, guys, like they are, I guess, sorry, I did, I did the math wrong, like 70 people, 80 people, whatever. You get what I'm trying to say, right? 95% of the people in the group still are in that, like flipping account, trying to hit it big on a trade. So, you know, that's the only reason I'm ever you know, so I guess you could say quote unquote aggressive. It's just because I'm real guys. It's because I wish that when I had started, I didn't have to go through a year of losing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, literally thousands of dollars. Like I probably lost like, I don't know, somewhere in the ballpark between six to 10,000 or more dollars in Forex. And luckily it's just that I've seen people lose tens of thousands of dollars because they are blessed enough to be in a situation where they have money to invest, but then they get into Forex and they get this shiny object syndrome and then they lose tons and tons of money. I've seen people lose hundreds of thousands of dollars in the market 
because they didn't know what they were doing and they chose to listen to greed and they chose to listen to themselves besides before, um, you know, pr investing properly. So the only reason you guys ever hear like quote unquote aggression or quote unquote sternness, and I'll, I'll agree with the sternness. I don't ever think it's aggression. It's just sternness is because I wish that there was somebody when I had started that was real with me and didn't sugarcoat things and told me how hard it was going to be rather than painting this picture of how social media paints it to be like, Oh yeah, it's going to be, you're going to learn it in, in a month. And then you're going to be able to quit your job in 90 days. And in a year from now, you're going to have a million dollars in your account. Like that, that's what some people literally believe guys. And you probably thought that at some point too. It's crazy. It is. It's really crazy to think, but like you got to actually like take a step back, look at life, look at the world and be like, wow, there's nothing in this world that should be that easy, right? And if it is that easy, why isn't everybody doing it? And there's a reason why everybody isn't doing it because it's not actually that easy, okay? So uh, that's my little pep talk or my little rant, guys. I'll get back to the charts, but I think it's, it's good to go over this stuff, guys. It's good to like be real with you guys once, you know, like on a regular basis because you some something you guys need that constant, like, you know, it's okay that the gains aren't a lot. It's okay that we're only up 7% this month because that 7% is way higher than any mutual fund is going to give you in a month, okay? And that's what I'm comparing my returns to. I'm not comparing my returns to the joker on Facebook that's posting screenshots of making $20,000 on a trade and has a rented Lambo in his pictures just to get people to sign up for his service. Like, I'm not that guy, guys. I'm the guy that's, yes, I, I use social media, guys, and I think it's good to share people with my life, and I like luxury things, and I mean, it's not like I have a Lamborghini yet. That's next year. Um, actually, first couple of months of 2018, I'm going to be upgrading from my Mercedes that I drive to an Audi R8, but that's for a different story, guys. That's because I like, I enjoy fast and nice cars, and I work really hard to get to where I'm at, but it's not like I, I, I buy that for any sort of self, any sort of public validation it's because that's what I want. That's what makes me happy. Okay. So anyways, getting back to the main picture guys is that, um, if you've been paying attention, we've been talking about pound yen and we talked about it literally at the end of November, be right the day before the monthly candle closed. And if you were, if you missed that webinar, go watch it guys. They're all recorded in your back office for you to watch. If you don't believe me, we talked about pound yen. And I said in the month of December, because we had such a bearish exhaustion candle and we've had such like descending consolidation and just the overall tone with pound yen right now is more to the downside than it is to the upside. I said, we, we could probably find some opportunities to sell this pair in the month of December. Did I not say that for those of you guys that were there? Okay. I did. Now, now we're here. Now we're here in December. Now you, you, you notice how th sometimes, think, sometimes things take time, guys, okay? Now, yes, could you have gotten away with shorting pound at the very beginning of the month and just listen to my analysis and drop? Absolutely. But I also said that there was a possibility at that time that we kind of, that we ran price up maybe back up to like the 148 area before moving lower. Now, did that happen? No, we ended up just continuing lower. So um, it worked out, but what I was looking for was these higher lows to be broken. And that's something that I specifically said, guys, before the month ended. Remember, this is back on November 30th, November 29th. And I said, okay, I said we were looking at this bear flag right here, looking at this bear flag, but I still wasn't convinced because we were still making higher lows. So we needed to break those higher lows. And so what happened last week? Where did the markets open? By breaking those higher lows. Okay, so that is that is how I use these higher time frames to distinguish the the trend on the quote unquote lower time frames, the daily, the four hour, etc. Okay, and I'm able to find high probability setups based on my original bias of the uh, the higher time frames, if that makes sense. Now, let me also say that with a grain of salt, guys. Let me just kind of retract that just a, by a moment by saying. Sometimes we're going to take a trade in the opposite direction of the trend on the monthly time frame or the daily time frame. And that's what we call an intraday or an intraweek trade. Now, this is still what we took was an intraday or an intraweek trade that happened to be confluent with our overall long term bias, right? And we got that. And you can also see we got that, that break and that retest here, right? So here's those higher lows. 
Here we broke, watch, let me zoom in a little bit more for those of you guys that are watching this on your smartphones, okay? I highly recommend too, guys, um, you know, I know, I know, I, I don't, I don't know everybody's finances. I don't know everybody's living situation. That's fine. But chances are, if you paid a thousand dollars to be in this group, okay, you probably can find enough money or budget yourself to get a cheapo little $200, $300 laptop. Okay. Now, is that going to last you years and years and years? Probably not, right? You get what you pay for at the end of the day. But it's a lot better to chart up and mark up and see the bigger picture on a laptop or even if you have like an iPad or some, a tablet, something larger than a phone. It, you're going to find that it's very difficult to trade long term and to see the things that you need to be able to see on a phone. Okay. So if, if you're, if you're working on a phone, that's okay. That's okay. All right. Like it's, it's okay. You can, you, you've got my signals. You've got somebody holding your hand and, and helping you along the way. Okay. But if you want to like really take it to that next level and you really want to do things for yourself and chart up and mark up and do proper analysis, you, it's really difficult to do it on your phone. Also on your phone, you can't put in things like the daily pivot points or the weekly pivot points. You can't put in, you can't put in some of these things. Okay. You can't put alerts in on your phone either. So you can't, you can't do any of that. Okay. So it's, it's very difficult. Okay. Uh, Miller says cheap tablets online all day for 40 to $50. Yeah. Facts. And e even that I will say, you know, I kind of, I kind of like want to backtrack a second. Like maybe even, even a tablet is difficult because unless the tablet can load like a computer, it's very difficult. You know, go, go out and get yourself a cheapo. I know you can go to Best Buy or whatever electronic stores where you are or a Walmart or whatever. And I know that they sell, you know, the cheapest laptop they have is like probably $150, $200. Okay. I know that you can grab something like that. So, um, uh, Al says, how do you get ATR on trading view? Well, um, I think you can just search for ATR in the indicators. We'll look in just a moment. Um, but let's just talk about this pound yen trade. Okay. So on the daily, that's what we were looking at, right? So not, so let me zoom in again. And we got that break right? We got that break, we got that retest, and then a bit of consolidation, and then the markets close at the low. So that's really telling us that there's a lot of bearish pressure on this pair, okay? So I chose to enter this trade at market open, right? At market open. I didn't care about the gap. I didn't care about the gap because gaps don't always close. We're going to look at it in a second. The gap did close, which is cool, right? I mean, but don't gap trade, guys. Just because there's a gap doesn't mean that the gap is going to close. The only reason the gap forms is because the broker stops quoting on the weekend. But if the broker was quoting, it would still be this long candle. So it's not even, it's, it's, if you really think about it psychologically, it's not even really a gap, right? There, there's no gap there. It's just what you perceive as a gap because that's what the broker is quoting you and showing you, if that makes sense. Okay. But um, you guys, most of you guys, I'm sure, can already start to see. You can see that our stop loss was above Friday's highs, right? Not only that, but I believe, well, this is the daily pivot point. Or maybe that's the weekly. Yeah, that's the daily pivot point. Whoa. Hold on, guys. Why is there? Hold on. Okay. No, no, no. We were right. We were right. We were right. Okay. We were right. This is the weekly pivot point. Okay. Just, just making sure. Okay. This is the weekly pivot point. So we're above the weekly pivot point. So there's multi, there's lots of confluence to, but it, the, the weekly pivot point is just confluence. The main thing is, is it was, it was above Friday's highs. That's the main thing. Okay. So we look at that and then we look at where our targets can be for this trade. Right. And we, so I throw this on the daily and I say, okay, Okay, David, well, where makes the most amount of logical sense if we were to move lower, right? Where is, if we break, let me go ahead and mark this off. If we break this level of support like we did, where is the most logical next level of support? Well, most of you guys, I mean, this shouldn't be, this isn't rocket science, guys, right? Most of you guys should be able to see, boom. That's our next level of support. Now, do I also recognize this trend line on the weekly? You know, this trend line right here? Yeah, yeah, I recognize this trend line. But it's, trend lines have very little 
significance to me as a trader versus horizontal support and resistance. Horizontal support and resistance defines supply and demand. Trend lines do not. Trend lines define lower, lower lows, lower highs, higher lows, or higher highs, okay? That's all that they do, right? Like right here, what is this doing? Here's our low, and then here's a higher low. That's all that this trend line is defining. It is not defining a level of supply and demand, okay? Very key, all right? Hold on, we have some, some stuff in the chat. Here's using my gaming computer. Yeah, gaming computers are great. I can't wait to get back to, I can't wait to settle down. I'm gonna build an entire setup for myself with probably like four, four giant screens, like four like 32 inch screens, get this huge thing going on. Unless it's got decent, decent, decent tablets, cool. Uh, Jacob, big facts. Uh, supply and demand levels are crucial. Yeah, it's very important that you guys understand supply and demand levels in OBs, order blocks, okay? Um, now, so let's, let's just kind of recap for a second, right? We have our entry, we have our take profit, we know where we wanna set our take profit at, and we have our stop loss. So what do we do? Okay, now we make sure that the risk to reward ratio is good. We make sure that we're looking to make at least double or our initial trade. Now, there, there's, we're going to talk about the discretionary side of trading in a moment and why we, we, clo we close this trade manually rather than letting it run all the way to our take profit. But you want to make sure that the trade that we enter has a target that has at least a take profit or target, whatever you want to call it, that is at least two times larger than the stop loss. Right, so we look at our stop loss and we say, okay, that's 110 pips. So quick maths, where do we get, put our target at? We need our target at at least 220 pips of profit. And where does this next support level go to? Right here, 290 pips of profit. So we can see our risk to reward is a 2.64, right? And if it was 220, then it would be an exactly two risk reward. So you see that? But no, we drag it to, we made it 290 because that was, or you guys see that right there, that's points, right? Or that's ticks or pipettes, points, whatever you want to call it, okay? That's why it says 2,900. We aren't making 2,900 pips. No, we're going, it's 290. Remove, bring the decimals place over one, okay? So that is 2.64, all right? Now let's get into the actual trade management, okay? And why we close this trade early. I think most of you guys can see why we closed this trade early, right? I mean, it was very volatile. There were a couple things though, okay? So let's go back to the news, okay? Let's go back to the fundamentals. So uh, after we closed this trade, I mean, sorry, after we entered this trade, we went into a little bit of, let's zoom in a little bit, right? We went into a little bit of drawdown, about what, about 20 pips of drawdown, 20 pips of drawdown or so, came right back to our entry and it, it looked like it was just gonna fall right from here. It didn't. Right, it didn't. This is obviously to trick people. This is obviously, guys, this is literally the biggest manipulation I've ever seen in my entire life. Well, I guess I'm kind of being sarcastic when I say that. I mean, I should, that's just an expression of speech. You guys, you guys get what I'm trying to say. Everybody and their mom that over leverages in, in look and tries to get rich on a trade, they see this downtrend, they see this gap close, they see this bearish engulfing candle. So, what do they do? They sell with 50 million lots underneath on this close, right? They're like, oh, baby, this is some easy money. I'm going to just over leverage my account and I'm going to, I can only handle a couple pips of drawdown, but I don't care that I can possibly blow my account on this trade. This looks like it's going to tank and I'm just going to make thousands of dollars because I'm over leveraging my account. Well, uh-uh, that's not what the market makers are going to let you happen. It's not going to be that simple. You know what's going to happen is they're going to drive price higher and everybody that can't sustain this drawdown, that 50 pips of drawdown because they over leveraged their account and didn't use a stop loss or those that did use their stop loss and put their stop loss just above this high right here or just above this moving average, boom. What happens? Everybody gets stops out or people blow their accounts because, and then everybody is all crying because they missed the move to the downside, right? And I have no remorse, you guys will hear this, hear me, you've heard me say it before, I know you'll hear me say it again, I have no remorse for people that over leverage their account. I have no remorse 
for somebody that's trying to hit a home run and get rich and fix all their problems on one trade. I get it, guys. We all have problems, okay? We all could use a little bit, of more, mo- little bit more money in our life and it would make our life great, okay? But you want to know something that someone told me one time? Is they told me that you got to this point in your life without the perception of getting rich quick with Forex. So why do you think you need it moving forward? No, keep doing your, your life. Keep living you. The only thing that should change is just your perspective that this is a way to build some serious wealth and respect it that it's going to take time, okay? So back, I, I digress, all right? We see, we see just some pure manipulation, right? Pure bearish engulfing candle. Everybody's like, oh, it's going to tank. Doesn't happen. Price runs up higher. Everybody freaks out. Everybody gets stopped out. Everybody's like, oh, pound yen isn't going down. But what do we do? We have a properly set up trade on the higher time frame. Our stop loss is way out of the way, yet our risk to reward is still flawless. And what happens? We get rewarded for being patient, using good risk management, and using good risk to reward. It's exactly what happens. Okay? And we see price move lower. Now, some of you guys are asking, why do we take profits early? Well, it's pretty simple why we took profits early, and that is because of the... Um, well now it's actually been taken off, right? You actually see, oh wow. They they took it off the calendar. They totally just took it off the calendar. Wow. Okay. Well, if, if you were to look at, wow, they, did they take it? Yeah. They took it off the calendar. No. Did they take it off the calendar? No, I don't know. I need to look. I'm like, I'm tripping out. I thought there was some, there was some crazy pound news. Yeah, there, there was on Tuesday. There was some parliamentary Brexit vote, but I mean, okay, so they pushed the vote back. So that makes sense. They pushed the vote back. I got it, guys. I, I put they pushed the vote back. So look, it's it's off the calendar now. But that's the reason why we originally closed the trade was because of the volatility with the pound, right? So we capitalized on the move to the downside. We capitalized on that initial weakness on the push down, and then we were out of the trade. So we closed. I don't know somewhere somewhere down in this area. I just know that we closed, or no? Did we close this whole way? Let's see where did we close at. Yeah, we closed, let's see, positive traders, students. We closed with 170 pips. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. We did close all the way down here. Yeah, so we closed somewhere down in this area. So you can see with the measurement. If you guys are, if you guys are wondering how I do that too, without going over here and clicking the ruler, if you just hold shift and click on the screen on trading view, it automatically pulls up your ruler for you. Okay. So 170 pips. We literally closed all the way down at the bottom here. And that was because of the volatility, right? The markets moved in a very short amount of time where we wanted. Not only that, but we passed our one-to-one risk to reward, right? Our stop loss is 110 pips. So we almost got, we almost closed at double our risk to reward, but not only that, it's discretionary trading, guys. Look at on the 15 minute. This is why we closed on the, on the, the smaller time frames. It's because of this right here. This is the true reason why we closed. That's the real reason. If you guys want me to be completely honest and the reason why we closed, it's because of that 15 minute candle. Okay. This nasty drop, which is good. I mean, nasty is in like good for us, this sick drop. And then nasty as an actually nasty, right? Pretty gross is that we want it to drop further, but it doesn't look like it's going to keep going because we see this, this long exhaustion candle. And I didn't want to risk the markets running all the way back up and losing the profits that we were in, right? Lock in the profits and move on to the trade. You guys got to understand that when you're trading six, seven figures, it's a lot more, it's, it's, it's a lot more money, right? It's a, it's a lot more money at the end of the day than just you know, a hundred dollar account that's, you know, 2% in profit guys. When you're looking at a seven figure account that's up $20,000, it's, you gotta, you know, you gotta kind of like put that in, put some things into perspective sometimes. Okay. Um, you have to change the time frame back yet. Yeah, thank you, Miller. Thank you very much. Let me do that right now. Good call on that. Oh, you can click. I like this. This is match automatically, which is pretty cool. You can save settings. You don't even have to think. Literally just come on here. Perfect. Thank you for that, Miller. 
Um, Carlos says, yeah, they took, yes, they took it off. Another perk of not using a phone for trading view. You know, Jacob, they actually have trading view as an app. I don't think it's on Android. I think it's only for iPhone right now. They took it off the Android play store or whatever you guys call your, your app store. But, um, even so it's just so difficult. You know, you try to like dra dra move something with your thumb and you end up moving a, a trend line around. The only reason I have trading view on my phone is for is to look at like other things besides you know stocks and options and things like that futures and whatnot robert says i have it for android yeah i know some people got it but if you look i'm pretty sure it's not there right now i know i know i think they took it off last time i checked to be completely honest i know that they had it on it for a while okay anyways guys that is our pound yen trade that is why we place this trade now to just kind of close off the the webinar, we I'll, I'll spend just like five more minutes, and then I'm not going to waste your guys' time any. Or I don't think this is a waste. Right? I'm not going to uh, uh, use too much of your guys' time anymore. But I'm still on the sidelines with a lot of things, right? You guys know that I would like to be looking to sell the dollar. We're still seeing the dollar in consolidation, so I'm really most dollar crosses right now. I'm not interested in trading. So that's a majority of these pairs, right? Euro USD, gold. USD Swiss franc, dollar yen, AUD USD, NZD USD, USD CAD, USD Singapore dollar. All of these pairs, I see some potential setups coming in the next couple of weeks, or maybe it might even take a month or more for them to form. But immediately right now in the, in the next 24 hours of the next day, I don't really see anything, okay? Um, I saw what we wanted on pound yen. We got in the markets, we capitalized, and we got the F out, right? We, we locked in our profits. And let's look, at, let's look at the profits for the month, right? Guys, November, had, or, sorry, November was good for us too, right? It wasn't as good as it was. I admit that we did some over trading. And again, I've addressed that on some of the previous webinars that, you know, next time when we're in some nice profits, I'm not, like we are this month, I'm not rushing and getting into a trade, guys. I am not going to over trade and let, this this 7.25 percent like last month when we were up almost six percent for the month go down back to 1.24 percent okay because I, I don't like that right but i do like some things that i see on here look at this like best trade 430 pips worst trade 169 pips look at my look at my win rate guys only 53 percent of the time only 53 percent of the time i'm winning i lost 30 out of 64 trades which represents 47%. 47% of my trades are losing, but look at my sharp ratio. Look at my profit factor, right? Look at the things that actually matter. This is a profitable trading period, okay? And December, I'm really happy. This is 7.25%. It's a ton of money. Um, that's some mutual funds don't even do that 7% in an entire year, guys. Think about that. Like, let that really sink in before you wanna like, jump on somebody for saying that their returns aren't good or enough, right? I get that all the time, not, not from you guys, but on social media, like I'll post something on Instagram and say, oh, I'm up, I'm up 7% for the month, I'm up 5% for the month. And I get all these haters in my inbox saying, oh, that's terrible results, I'm doing 100% in a week. Well, there's a reason you're in my inbox trying to convince me to do what you do because you probably need me to sign up for whatever you bullshit you have going on, okay? You know, I'm happy with what I do and I don't need anybody to, uh, you know, try to pretend like it's not because it is. I know what I do and I know the clients that I manage and I know the money I manage, okay? Uh, Miller, if, you, if I was still in GJ, where would I have my stop loss? Good question. I will answer that for you. If I was in GJ still and I didn't close where we close, I would have my stop loss right above where my cursor is at, right above like pretty much 142.45 right above the daily pivot point and right above this, this previous level of resistance because it's almost guaranteed that if price breaks above this level right here, it's gonna move all the way back up to the entry, almost guaranteed. Or it's gonna move back up to this zone right here, which is pretty much the entry, okay? That's where I would, I would have my stop loss. So you want an exact answer? 142.45 is where I would have my stop loss at if I wasn't out of this trade already, okay? but I would, I would consider taking your profits. I would consider, I mean, I mean, it's, if, if you didn't get out all the way down here, then yeah, keep your, keep your take profit. I mean, keep your stop loss at 142.45. Don't get out right now, but don't, don't keep your stop loss at break even. Don't keep your stop loss where it originally is. Make sure you secure the bag um, and look for, for price to move lower. Now,
for those of you guys that are already out and you're listening to me say that, that doesn't mean take a sell right now because I think it's going to keep going lower. I honestly, it's neutral for me right now. It has the same equal chance of moving higher and back to our entry right now that it does to move lower towards our take, our original take profit. Okay. All right. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, none of these other pairs, USD. I, I do want to take a look at USD CAD. Ooh, yeah. I'm glad. Look at that, guys. I am glad we're waiting. I'm glad we're waiting. This is what patience gets us, guys. Patience prevents losing trades. Sometimes patience can prevent winning trades also, right? But what do they say? Uh, the three Ps, right? Or the five Ps. Proper preparation prevents poor performance, right? So <laughs> kind of corny, but right? It is true. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. The five Ps, okay? And we can see right now, like properly preparing for this trade is, pre is preventing poor performance on selling this trade, right? And now, what have I told you guys? Am I interested in, in looking for a long-term sell on USD CAD at some point? Absolutely. But what have I also said previously, right? I said, look, let's measure this 800 pips, right? Like 800 pip move up, 800 pip move up, 800 pip move up. What makes probably sense right here, right? Something maybe an 800 pip move up. And where are we? We're only, so it's like 600, between 600 and 650 pips move up, moved up. So we might actually have an opportunity to buy USD CAD for a couple hundred pips if this pair starts to show some really strong signs of bullish momentum, right? And if we break out of the upside of this channel, we might get some, some buying opportunity to be completely honest, right? We might be able to buy this pair, let's say like 800 pips up to here. Oh wow, that's almost like spot on with uh, R2 of the week. Let's go ahead and put this right here, like where 800 is, basically right there. And then let's measure how many pips that is from current price to where oh, to oh, where we would look. So 170 pips. So if we can get a buy on this pair that makes sense, we'll take it, right? We'll take it if it makes sense. If the risk to reward makes sense and our risk management makes sense, we might even look for a buy, okay? So that's a, that's a possible opportunity. Carlos said, learn the five P's doing sales. Same here, my man, when I was 18 years old and doing door-to-door -door sales, that's where I learned the five P's as well. Um, so that's USD CAD and Euro NZD, Euro AUD, not interested in right now. USD Singapore dollars, still not interested in, still waiting for it to really find some downside. Looks like USD Singapore dollar could maybe push up one more time before falling, but this move will come eventually, it will, but is it gonna come right now? Probably not. And then AUD, NZD, AUD, NZD, not interested in trading right now, right? Not interested at all. Pretty much the only thing that I, that I think could potentially be a maybe trade this week at some point is a potential buy on USD CAD. Now, I'm not interested in getting into to it though because we're also, again, we look at on this higher time frame, we're also at a major level of resistance. So, you know, or, the, or what we call supply. Right, a very strong supply level. So there's also very strong selling pressure in this area as well. Um, and we've, you know, we kind of already missed that opportunity to buy, right? If we wanted to buy, we should have got in 500 pips ago or a couple hundred pips ago on one of these lower highs, not buying all the way at the tip top of these highs. However, to play the devil's advocate, we do have a strong bullish engulfing candle. This, this pair is showing signs of strengthening. The US dollar is also showing some short-term signs of strengthening as well. You know, we have that strong bullish daily candle that just closed um, a couple hours ago for the daily candle. So there's definite argument to some short-term upside on the dollar index, which we may capitalize on by taking a buy on USD CAD, but I'm not, uh, not super interested. Sunny says, uh, AUD USD thoughts. I'm not really interested in AUD USD, Sunny, to be honest. I mean, we can see the liquidity area, but really, I'm, I'm just not interested in playing with the dollar right now. We could very well see AUD USD drop a little bit below this liquidity zone, below these lows where a lot of people have their stop losses at, and then move up higher. I think I saw, Sunny, I think I saw something you mentioned. You, saw, you said something about bear flag in the chat room um, earlier. I, I can see that, right? I can, I can, I can respect that. If you're looking for like a small intraday 
scalp, there could be some opportunity to the downside, some short-term opportunity to the downside, right? And also, Sonny, keep in mind real quick, and this is for all of you guys too, AUD, USD, and USD CAD have a negative correlation to each other, okay? Or a generally negative correlation to each other, okay? So keep that in mind, right? If I'm, if I'm talking all this, all this talk with USD CAD, possibly looking for some short-term buys, well, then it would make a lot of sense to look, be looking for some short-term sells on um, AUD, USD. Holy cow, Miller, you said, I sold Kirby vacuums in my early 20s while living in my car. That is what I sold for two years. I did door-to-door -door sales just to get off on a tangent real quick. Yeah, I, I did. That was my first thing. I sold, I, I killed it. I broke some divisional records. Uh, my best month, I sold 86 Kirby vacuum cleaners in one month. 86 going door-to-door. -door. It was crazy. Made, made some serious, serious money. I did that in Albuquerque, New Mexico in like 2011. It was crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy times. That was where I first got my, uh, my, my backbone of, of being an entrepreneur and wanting to work for myself. Oh, yeah, Miller, I, I killed it. Two years I did it, made almost $100,000 doing it both years. Each year doing, I did like 90-some thousand dollars one year and 90-some thousand dollars the last year. That's what both my 1099 said. It was, it was a crazy good time. Wow, yeah, knocking on doors, holy cow, getting rejected, meeting some crazy people. Those are some experiences I will never, ever forget probably for the rest of my life. That's like, that's like it literally made me who I am and made me this outgoing person and made me this person that has a backbone and can tell somebody no and can think for myself. It's, it's crazy. Like that's literally the beginnings of, um, of my, of my, of my sales career. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. I, I worked in the golden West division. If you remember those and golden West division is like Southern California, Nevada, and Arizona. And I, broke a world record. I got my silver K, which is like when you sell 12 Kirby's the fastest that anybody else in that division in the world of like a hundred years had ever done. So it's crazy, crazy. I, 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 it was, that was some fun times. Anyways, um, Carlos says, <laughs> Carlos says, UJ looked good yesterday, but I don't like that daily candle. Let's take a look at UJ. Um, yeah, I don't like that daily candle either, Carlos. I mean, it's coming back right now. It's retracing. You know, I, I've, I've mentioned for a while we want it. We're trying to look for some sells on dollar yen. Um, let me give you guys a little tip too. Write this down. You guys want to know a little like secret or a little hint? Okay. Generally speaking, this is general. This isn't going to happen every week. Okay. But a lot of times in the markets, you're going to see the high of the week or the low of the week on your Monday going into Tuesday candle. Okay, I'll say that again. You're gonna usually see the high of the week or the low of the week made on your Monday going into Tuesday candle. So basically like on your Tuesday candle open or your Tuesday candle, okay? Because like London comes after the Monday candle closes, right? London for the Tuesday, I might be confusing you guys if you don't understand all the time zones and everything, okay? But London comes after London for the, the second day of the week opens in the Tuesday candle, if that makes sense, after the Monday candle close. So Monday going into Tuesday, if that makes sense, okay? This is all, this, okay, say one more time, okay? The highs of the week or the lows of the week. So the highs for that week and that low of that week are usually made on the Monday going into Tuesday, okay? So that, what that means is like it can either be like the, the, the end of the Monday session where we have like the Asian-Australian session or that very next session which begins in Tuesday which is the London session. Actually, we have Australian and then London, Asian-Australian London, okay? High, okay, Miller says, Miller is repeating it, high of the week or low of the week made on your Monday going into Tuesday open candle. Um, let's just call it, let's just say this guys, let, let me just make it easier for you guys. Let's just say Tuesday candle. Okay. On the Tuesday candle. Okay. So, but, but it, it just also depends on where you live because sometimes that Tuesday candle can also be some people's Monday candle, right? Because it depends on your time zone. It depends on where you live. So that's why I said it's like Monday going into Tuesday, but, um, I would just, American Tuesday candle. Good, good way to put it, Jacob. Yeah. When it, when it's, when it's the Tuesday candle in New York city, usually that candle will see the high or the low of the week made generally speaking. Okay. During also the London, New York session. Sometimes you guys know the golden, the golden, the golden zone. 
you have, if you've ever heard of the golden zone, okay, the golden zone is when London is open and New York opens during London. In that three hour period, when London is open and New York is open at the most at the same time, that's when there's the most liquidity going into the market. And that that's when there's generally the most amount of volatility and gives you the best trading opportunities and the markets move the shortest amount of time, uh, the most in a short, the, that the markets move the most in the shortest amount of time is generally in during that golden hour, golden, golden hours, that golden zone. Okay. Is the London into New York crossover. Okay. Cause those are the two biggest markets. You guys know generally during like the Asian session and the New York's, I mean the Asian session and the Australian session markets don't tend to move a whole lot. Yep. New York open, London close. Absolutely. Okay, guys. Woo. That is a lot of talking for the day. We did a, almost an hour today, but I think you guys are good. Yeah. That's, Miller says, I like the session. That makes me money. Yeah, and that's one thing too. I'll, I'll just quickly say is I recognize the sessions. Okay. I recognize the sessions, but I don't necessarily let the sessions determine when I place a trade and when I take a trade. I care. I put more emphasis on price action and looking for confirmation on my setups than I do. Okay. I need to be looking for a trade because it's the New York session and I need to be looking for a trade because it's the London session. No, as long as the markets are giving me what I want, I'll take the trade. Okay. So that's it for the day, guys. Thank you guys so much for your support. You know, I love when we start this and there's the same amount of people on here after an hour that there was at the end. Okay. Hopefully those of you guys that, that aren't here, I mean, actually it looks like all of you guys are here pretty much all the time. But hopefully if you're watching this, if you're watching the recording and, and you don't strive to be on these webinars every single day and you learn something today, I know, I know that there was a lot of things that we went over today that I know I'm sure a lot of you guys probably had some light bulb moments and you probably had so much information given out tonight because I don't always go this hard, right? Because it just depends. It depends on how the vibes, it depends on how the energy is. Not always is it going to be this crazy, good, you know, awesome time. Sometimes it's going to be boring as crap, guys. It's going to be boring as shit and there's nothing, nothing I can do about it. It's just like what the market gives us. It's just the way things are and there's nothing to really work with. Other times the markets are going to be amazing and everything's going to be going great and it's going to be time like this. Energy is flowing and everything's good. But that's why you got to stay consistent with these webinars. Okay. That's why you got to stay on them every single day consistent. And if I can be consistent doing it at the, around, around the same time every day, you can be consistent with at least finding some time throughout your day, not even having to stay consistent with the same time, but just finding some time throughout your busy day because we're all busy, guys. You, you, you think you're busy? I'm busy too, okay? But just because you guys see me on my Instagram story sitting at the beach this morning, get, you guys think I'm just like sitting on the beach all day. Well, I, I might sit on the beach all day today because we had, a, we, had a, we had a good time and I might go actually take a nap on the beach, but <laughs> it, that doesn't happen every day, right? It's taken a couple days to, to, to relax and just rejuvenate my soul and cleanse my cleanse my energy and just get ready for a good year, guys. You know, I'm just so dedicated to not just my success, but dedicated to your, your guys' success too. That I got to keep my mind right. Okay. I got to keep my mindset right. Okay. So as much as you guys want me to be a robot all the time and just on the charts 24 seven, I would love to be, but that you need to have a good balance of things in your life. Okay. And have need to have a good balance of relaxation, good, good balance of mindset and cleansing your body and your soul. Okay. That doesn't mean go to the club and get fucked up on the, sorry, I don't try to use like crazy profanity guys, but get effed up on the weekend. Okay. All right. That's not cleansing your soul and cleansing your body and helping you. Okay. Now, is it bad to party once in a while? Celebrate something? No, but make sure if you go out and celebrate, you have something to celebrate for. Okay. You're celebrating a best friend's birthday. You're celebrating, you know, your parents birthday. You're celebrating something that actually can be celebrated for you're celebrating your success and where you are doing something. Okay. So don't think that just because I, I, I personally choose not to drink. Okay. I personally choose not to drink, not to go out, do things like that. You know, you know, I'll go out, but I'm not going to drink and, and get all messed up because I know that it, it, it messes with my mindset. It sets me back mentally and it doesn't keep me motivated and where I want to be. And so I recognize that, right? I'm real and conscious enough to recognize that and have enough self-control and discipline to get that. And guys, when you, when you start to just discipline yourself in, in, in different small areas of your life, it's like this crazy domino effect. Everything just starts to fall into place and your life just starts to just like get so good and everything just makes sense. And you're able to think clearly and you're able to crush your goals and you're able to just do all of this good stuff 
It's just awesome. And that's what life is about. Life is, is about feeling good and doing what you want to do. All right. Not like, not just living it up for the weekend because it's a Friday and because it's the weekend and it's what you do. No, like it, it's okay to celebrate, but don't make it like a regular thing. Okay. So everybody has their demons. Everybody has their battles. Everybody has their vices. All right. If you ever need somebody to reach out to you guys, I'm always here for you. Okay. If you need someone to reach out to, you struggle with whatever, reach out to me. Okay. I'm like a doctor. We have, uh, we have that, that discretionary where I, <laughs> that discretionary, what do they call it? Like, uh, you know, client, pa client, patient, uh, privacy, whatever, you know what I mean? I'm not going to go out and tell your whole business to the world. So if you need someone to talk to you guys, and I'm busy, I'll, I'll find some time. I'll, I'll always try to message you guys as fast as possible. You guys know that's one thing about me. I always try to message back right away and get things right away. But if you, if you ever need some, some moral support, there's nobody else in your, in your life that can give you that type of support guys. I will be that person for you guys. Okay. Jacob says good energy, positive momentum multiplies exponentially with consistency. Ab so freaking lutely. Okay. And with that guys, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening, afternoon or morning. Vegan gain says, do you give financial advice like debt consolidation? Uh, <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't do financial advice. Uh, you know, uh, debt consolidation, uh, there, there actually is a law firm that you can use. Look it up. It's called Lexington law. They're like, I used them in the past. So my credit was all messed up and terrible. Um, it's, they're like a hundred and twenty dollars a month and they fix your credit for you. They fix everything for you. They literally like go and fight for you and they have lawyers that go and try to like fix everything. So debt, but I don't know what kind of debt consolidation. If it's student loans and stuff, you're kind of effed. Okay. Um, but if it's like bad credit and stuff like that, like bills you didn't pay and stuff went to collections and stuff like that when you were younger, uh, hit up Lexington law. There's a lot of people on social media that are like, Oh, join my, you know, fix my credit group, credit repair, this and that. No guys, don't mess with those companies. Don't mess with any of that stuff. Hit up like a real law firm, hit up a real lawyer. Lexington law is great. I've used them personally. My credit score went from like the, the five hundreds up to in the seven hundreds now. Okay. Just because I let, I just paid someone else to fix my credit and let them do everything for me. Okay. Um, anyways, <laughs> we're going off in so many tangents guys. Aiken says, uh, or just pay your bills. Yeah, exactly. Or just, or just pay your bills. You know, I mean, yeah, pay your bills. Aiken says, David, I actually have a buy stop on GJ entry at 142.43. Uh, I would not look at buying Aiken. I really would not look at buying. If anything, I would be looking at selling a rally if it goes up higher, honestly. Or it just, I wouldn't even touch it. Like we, we, we made our 2%, our almost 2% for the week. We made our 170 pips. I'm really not interested. So I'm, ju I'm just from, from mono e mono Aiken. I recommend removing that buy stop. Honestly, I would recommend just sitting on your hands, stay out. I know it's exciting. I know it's, it's good to want to be in the market, but just sit on your hands. Just, we, we don't need to get too greedy and buy the sell that we just made the money on the sell on. Just, just chill, just chill and, and, and wait until we see something a little bit better. Okay. If, if it makes sense to you though, do it. Okay. But other than that, guys, I'm really going to end it here. I've taken up so much of you guys' time tonight. Thank you guys so much for being patient and with me and just listening to everything I have to say. It seriously means a lot. And I'll see you guys tomorrow on the, on the daily webinar. Peace out guys and have a great rest of your day. Take care.